David, welcome to the pre-recorded live stream. Tell me a little bit about how you found this these live streams. How I found the live streams. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, I don't have a whole lot of friends who are. I should stop right there. I don't have a lot of friends. Um, no, I don't have a whole lot of friends who are into watches. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when I have free time or just doing whatever, I'll uh, look for watch channels and information. I start researching more stuff on, um, you know, what I have based on what everybody else is saying about it and reviews yes. and things like that. Um, you know, I started watching the, the watch box, uh, shows the reviews, that type of thing. And then, you know, uh, the algorithms and everything, they, they start to know what you like. And, uh, eventually I found about a hundred other channels. And after weeding through a few of them, I, uh, on the community, I found the community and, uh, and yeah, here I am. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's been uh, interesting, but I'm glad because mm. like I said, you, not not everybody cares to talk yeah. about watches or to hear what you just bought or why it's so important and all that kind of stuff so hey man we're we're glad that you found us it's uh it's quite a quite a journey to here you know a lot of people uh, it, it it does take quite some time to find them but it's actually it's a little bit too addicting <laughs> i've got to be honest man people get a little bit too addicted to the live streams and they're in and like 12 because Man, we're, we're doing a little bit too much. Too I, much I was going to say, I, every time, like, you know, I whenever I can, I you know, I'll put it on. But most of the time I catch it after the mm -hmm. fact and then I'll make comments. But I feel like I'm not participating, you know, so I try to yeah. catch it live. But holy cow, yeah, it's the, I see some of the same people. I'm like, wow, I mean, I wonder if I'll get this into it, you know, And but uh, mm -hmm. I love to hear everybody talk about it. You know, even if I don't agree with everything, I think that's it's a really great forum. So. Hey man, and how long how long have you been into watches? How like uh, long have you been collecting? Co uh, collecting probably, it's a kind of a funny story, I guess. I kind of got blackmailed into it. Um, Ooh, very cool. All right. Yes. So I'm I'm uh, 23, 24. Uh, you know, one of my first jobs out of college in sales, selling uh, radio advertising. So I had a jewelry store as a uh, customer, but they never advertised with us. So the oh, one day okay. I in there and we were talking and he said, Hey, if you buy a Rolex, I'll, I'll advertise with you. And he goes, I'll even give it to you at a discount. I'll give it to, I forget what he said anyway, but he's like, it ended up coming to $3,500 and I didn't have $3,500, but oh. I had a credit, I had a credit card that had a $5,000 limit. Okay. <laughs> nice. So, uh, so I bought that and spent the next, you know, year paying it off probably. And then, uh, I just, uh, it was a 0% or was it high interest? Oh, it was, oh, it my, oh, it was interest. Oh yeah. It was, Ooh. it was just a 24 year old thing to do for me, but, uh, Damn. what kind of, anyway, what kind of Rolex was it? It was a date just, um, with, uh, engine turn bezel on it, uh, black face. Okay. okay. What? Yeah. Um, clean, clean. Yeah, it was uh, Jubilee yeah. Oyster. 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 I didn't even know at that point in my life I thought they all came on Jubilee bracelets. I just thought the Rolex was the Rolex, you know. Oh. <laughs> so he, he showed me the different things and everything and it was educational and uh I just really wow. got into it after that, yeah. And uh did you sell that watch? I did. I got um $100 more when I sold it for than when I paid for it in uh you know, whatever that nice. was, you know, 17 years ago. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that, that probably, did you expect, did you expect to get like your money back for, for it when you were selling it? I had no idea it, up until five years ago. I don't know that I realized that you could, uh, you know, sell them now, well, maybe seven years ago, let's say, but yeah, mm. no, I had no idea. Wow. No idea. Yeah. I thought it was just a, you know, something I was going to do and have forever. And I, had it for a really long time. I really love that one, but uh, I don't know. I have trouble holding on to things for too long. So, hey man, well, you got really lucky by buying, by being, by having your first watch being Rolex. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah and kind of part of the reason that, well, may, basically the whole reason that I got a Rolex was because I watched a video of Archie where he was oh. talking about uh, the only watch that you can buy at retail. Is Rolex yeah. and then nothing else. Everything else you have to buy used because it's like half. It, it it's half the price. 
yeah uh on the on like the gray market i didn't know anything about the gray market or anything but it was uh it was the reason that i turned down rolex website and started looking through their mo- their catalog yeah uh and uh yeah that's uh that's that's kind of uh, what why why i got into it. but yeah. so so you go from uh you have that your first rolex yep then you you sell it but like why do you why do you sell it and how how do you get into your second piece so well no i i had that for mm. oh man for so almost 14 years i had that watch so my second wow. piece yeah so after i got into That's it incredible. I, yeah, I just made the the silly decision that a lot of watch collectors do, which is um, I need to have like one watch for every style of watch, one watch for every, you know, this and that, you know, wow. and so I ended up with like, um, you know, I was like, I need a pilot's watch because I don't know why, because that, yeah. was, you know, thought I needed, I needed that. It was a trend. I was probably during the yeah. IWC height. Yeah, it was that. So, but, you know, I, I didn't have IWC money, so I ended up with Hamilton khaki. And uh, okay. I live, um, you know, a uh, half hour from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So, yeah, all the history of Hamilton. So I started wow. getting, I started to get into those. I owned probably four or five over the years, um, and the only two I kept were the the pilot's watch and that military issue vintage one that I have. Oh, I think I have it here. Let's see. This would be no. Wait, this doesn't say Hamilton. No, that's the one uh, I built. That's the watch I built. Oh. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. And this is the back of it, right? Yep. Let's just leave it here for now for suspense purposes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everybody's <laughs> on the edge of their seats. So. Yes. <laughs> and this is one Hamilton, and yep. I think this would be the second one. Okay. That's, yep, that's the old one. Here we go. Now, you still had Rolex, or you already sold the Rolex when you picked up Hamilton? Uh, I had the Rolex. I ever since I've owned that Rolex, I've always had at least one. Okay. So I had that one, and then when I the, the time that I traded that one in was when I got my Black Submariner. Um, oh. Yeah. So the uh, the ceramic sub that I had, which also was right next to a ceramic Hulk, uh, Pepsi. I mean, everything was in that showcase at the time that I bought that. It was amazing. Oof. Anyway. And you went through some pieces here. Rolex, two tone, date, just champagne, but oh my god! Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to that. All right, so so you still ha- you still have your your Hamiltons. Yep, I have now, those two that you show in there. Yep. Now, what do, what do you use these for? Because uh, they do look like they got they got some you know went through quite a bit of life. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 khaki X wing, um, I X wind. Um, mm-hmm. I just beat the crap out of that one. I mean, I wear it everywhere. Uh, you know, to work, you know, outside hiking, whatever. So the other one, the military issue one, I really never do wear. It's just more for the historic significance of it, I guess, since it's an actual mm-hmm. military one with the, I like the little um, nuclear yeah, sign on it. It's got some interesting, like a uh, kind of slide ruler situation or what's, what is that? that? Yeah. That's to be able to judge, um, uh, uh, crosswinds i have no idea how to use it but that's what it's supposed to do you know that's the kind of uh there's this mistake that a lot of newbies into watches make they get really complicated watch yeah and then you kind of stuck with all the complication not really using it and then it's the the really simple one and i re i can really appreciate that khaki look at that it's just not even a day you know it's just clean simple you put it on you're ready to go so that's pretty insane. I actually, I'm uh, I'm thinking of adding some of these just for kind of to have fun because I know these Hamilton cocky ones. They're super nice, super nice watches. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I I really like this one. I think I you can't really pinpoint the date for this one. It's anywhere between mm-hmm. this model is like seventy to eighty three or something like that. So mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what year it actually. Oh is. wow! Yeah. So this is a vintage one. Yeah, this one's this one was a military issue in wow. one of those years. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Okay. So uh then now you still have your date just right? Where do you move from there? So the, um I still have those. I went through a, a tag Carrera. Um I had a 
Was it uh, just basic Carrera or a chronograph or GMT? No, basic. Um, I think it had a date on it, and it was a mother of pearl dial, uh, but like a really low key one you could barely tell. Interesting. Um, yeah, not not a really. I mean, I really liked it. I, I just got rid of it because I was never wearing it anymore. Mm. And Carrera I, Carrera Twin Time was my first luxury watch. Was it really? Yep, and wow. uh, got it for twenty three hundred. Okay. And then when I got the Rolex, I was I was thinking I'm gonna sell it, but it was worthless. It was yeah. uh, it was uh, I was offered nine hundred dollars for it. Yep. I spent so much, so we figured, you know what? We'll just uh, we'll just gift it to a relative. Yeah. And he's still wearing it, and then he's gonna give it to his son because his son really loves it. So it kind oh, of wow. passed off to the family. Great watch, freaking yeah. iconic. I wish I still had it, but. At that time, I thought eh, maybe maybe I, I thought I'm just gonna be one watch guy. Like, why would I need a second watch? I got yeah. the the sub. And what's interesting? So I went in to get the Daytona. Yeah, they didn't have it. They gave me an option to like, if you buy something else, we'll put you on the waiting list. So I got the sub instead. And then once I got the sub, I was like, oh my god, the sub is so good. I kind of uh, didn't even think I'm gonna need a Daytona. At that yeah. point, because it was, I was so satisfied. But uh, then I realized, like, oh man, man, these things are actually quite uh, important because I didn't know anything about the the history, the heritage of the Daytona when I got right. on the waiting list. But as I start learning more about watches, like, oh shit, good thing I'm on the waiting list. That's a that's a really cool watch. So, okay, but yeah, I I got rid of Daytona, and now I'm kind of every time I go to uh, to the family, I'm like. Oh. Yeah, my 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 watch. Uh, <laughs> it's in my grasp. And look, I, I mean, wh where do you know where your first Rolex is? The one that no. you had for fourteen years. I know. They, it, I, I I see pictures of the you know the same model and everything, and yeah. I always think to myself, could that be mine? Could that be the one Yo. that I sold? You know, because if I if I knew for a fact that it was the one that I sold, I would probably pay well over what I sold it for to get it back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's. I actually like. I, I'm gonna. I hope that they never sell the Carrera. I hope they always keep it. But yeah. I'm actually. I do have to tell them, like, guys, if you ever gonna sell it, I'll take it from you. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it was, I, yeah, it's, it's important. It's important. The nostalgia so, is. Yeah, you, you you forget about that, and that's why I ended up not having some of the watch because I was never mm -hmm. really connecting with them. I'm, I'm like, well. Am I am I really a collector or am I one of the people who just has it to have it? And mm. you know, could I, could I use that you know proceeds to do other things? And you know, that's how I ended up in Switzerland, and that's why I have the Vacheron and all that kind Ooh. of stuff. Yeah. Oh, there, yeah, stories. So, 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 how, wait, how did you? How did you? Why did you get the 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 Carrera? It, it, I I thought it was a dress watch. It was simple, you know what I mean. I I, I had all these other. Ones. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I, I have to have that, a dress watch, yeah. and that one was, you know, it looked. Did you get it cool. at retail or used? No, that one I got at retail, but I got it at a. It must have been a pretty good price, or I had it long enough that mm -hmm. they got a little more. I I sold that one when I got a Bell and Ross Phantom, and I actually so I bought that tag for like twelve hundred, and I think they gave me fifteen hundred for it. Oh. Because I think I got it right before Tag kind of hit a little wave of popularity, and the, and it was a, a somewhat limited, you know, run of them or something like that. No, let me just bring up this Phantom here for a second. Now, was, was it full black? Yeah, because I convinced myself that I needed yeah. a completely black watch. Yeah, that was. It is a trend. It is a very trendy thing, and also square, but it's completely unreadable from from what I can see, right? Actually, it's more unreadable. So if the loom is going, it's really cool oh. mm. because it's like a greenish loom on on the the solid black. But once yeah, once that loom is gone, even if it's like dusk, yeah, you can't tell the time. Oh, what's interesting. interesting. I'm surprised they don't advertise it with the loom pictures because it's right. just so much nicer. Huh. Yeah, I, I love that. Oh, when I have like small that. wrists, and that is not a small watch. <sighs> Yeah, these the square watches they always throw you off. And yeah. The luck to luck. Yeah. It's uh, it was too too big for my wrist, and mm. just I styled out of it. I was it just didn't. Yeah. It wasn't me. I just I bought it because I thought that I needed to have that type of watch, and I. Yeah. You know. Hey, look. Uh, 
I don't blame you. It is a trendy looking watch. It oh, is very I, trendy. I was probably 30 when I got that, I think. Yeah. Right Man, I actually, uh, I'm not going to say. There's a watch in my life that I, I to omit, I omit in my in my story, actually. What's that? Oh, my God. It was a, it was a U-boat, a U-boat mm. that I got on a wood, wood website. Yeah, it was like a, at a mega discount, and uh, oh. it was a whole. It was an ordeal, actually. I was able actually. It stopped working, and I sold it. You, I only wore it once. It was so heavy, so big, and just it was a disaster. An absolute yeah, those are, disaster. Those are massive watches. Now what? Now you you went from that one to now. What? When did you get the Pam? Was it this one? The zero 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 six nine. Yeah, that's the exact one. Um, I got that one because I was uh, I wanted a blue faced watch, and um, I, I like the blue on that one. It was actually a 40, 40 mil, so it actually fit oh. instead of the giant, you know, Pams that they have. Yeah. So um, I liked it. I just never really. I, I could have taken it or leaving it if at any point in time I was wearing it. If somebody would have walked up and asked, you know, hey. Can I buy that for three fourths of what you paid for it? I'd be like, yeah, I don't care. Wow. Yeah, but it was nice. I mean, I, I have nothing yeah. bad to say about it. Yeah, it, it's definitely very tooly tool kind of watch. And yeah, yeah, this is the historically, it's very, you know, it doesn't have the sandwich dial. Yeah. There's a Cyclops. There's a lot of things that the Pam they were really experimenting with all kinds of uh, ideas, but. Yeah, it's the kind of thing. And that's that, the uh, that's it's the reverse cyclops, so it's like underneath the thing, so it's flat on the top. Okay. But let me tell you, the glare off of any kind of fluorescent light makes you think that there's a giant scratch in your watch all the time. Like I was oh. constantly rubbing it to make sure that it wasn't a scratch, and I was like, "Why does it look like that?" And it was some sort of glare off of the light. Yeah, <laughs> always it drove me nuts. Oh my god, that's funny. And what when did the JLC moon phase. Actually, that's a beautiful watch. It really JLC is a beautiful watch. Yeah. I don't I thought I'd have that one forever. Yeah. I can't explain it. I just didn't the way it fit, the way it sat on yeah. your wrist. I don't know. I thought that would be it. Hmm. I I don't know. Never connected with it. Didn't yeah, I don't know. It's a beautiful watch. It that's really nice. is. It but, really but you is. really did upgrade. And in JLC, it's a kind of um, it is a compromise be be before the Vashon, because like the 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 Holy Trinity, those are the like super proper, yep, uh, watches. And you you would think that I I always thought, you know, I always had a problem with the date on this watch. It's so tiny. The moon phase date. Oh, yeah. Date is impossible to read. I don't know. Did you have that problem or no? Was it the size I, I, and the fit? I, yeah, I wore it so little that I, I'm not sure that I ever actually looked at the date. I probably said wow. it. Yeah, but I, like I said, I just, I had it and I found mm -hmm. I went three, six months without wearing it. I'm like, well, why, why, why do you have it then? So, mm -hmm. wow. and I can't explain why. I really can't. I really liked it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Now you also had no. You you mentioned you had the Submariner date. Yes. So that's the one I have. I still have. That's my first ever watch. Yeah. So that one. That's my most recent sell, actually. Oh. Yeah, and oh. I that that's why I'm going to take a beating for that because you know who would sell a Submariner, you know, in 2020 or whatever. It's not a good time to sell a Submariner. I got to be honest. It's just no. not a good time. Yeah. Um, How, who who talked you into selling that? Because if you were if you still had it, I would tell you not to do that. Yeah, I would probably tell myself that too. But um, mm -hmm. I didn't know that they were going to keep going as crazy as it was. I mean, I I wasn't wearing it, and um, I just I went into I so here's the the story is really mm -hmm. it goes like this. So I had saved about five to seven thousand to buy a dress watch because I didn't have a dress watch anymore. So I went in to look at dress watches and that's when I saw the Vacheron and I really wanted that. And 
I uh, basically the way it came out is if I saved up a little more money, yes, I could get the Vacheron and a brand new Seamaster at mm. the same time if I sold the Submariner. So basically, the Submariner turned into a Vacheron dress watch and an Amiga Seamaster plus five thousand. Yeah, plus uh, plus about uh, yes yeah, seven thousand. I think seven thousand. Yeah, so I think it was. I think it's seven seven or eight. I think is what it ended up. Let me let me bring up Seamaster here at the same time. Let's just have them all laid out. Uh, wait. Okay. Okay. Here we have the three. Okay. Oof. Okay. So the sub plus seven thousand. I think it's between seven and ten. I can't really tell you how that. Deal well, that veteran is not cheap, uh, because no, and actually the the that Vacheron, I it yeah. was pre-owned, but yeah. it was a 2018 in 2020, and the person who bought it new in 2018 returned it to the same place they bought it from and said it wasn't running correctly. Huh. So that that place sent it back to Vacheron. They did a complete rebuild of it and sent it back oh, to them wow. with a brand new uh, band and everything. So I got that for under 20 and it was basically brand new. Wow. This, I think is, we, this is white gold or is that platinum? White white gold. Yeah, I don't think huh. they make a plat. I'm, I'm not sure. I know they do yellow gold. I don't know if they do. No idea. Gold. Yeah. Damn. So, wow. I mean... Financially, the deal is good for right now, but if the Submariner doubles in value, then of course I it's think, not. Yeah, I don't think the the Submariner is gonna go. Submariner is gonna go much higher because it's it's all about now the forty one. Yeah. Um, I think the forty ones might go higher because uh, if if Rolex puts a, like a lid on the forty one, how many they produce? Yeah. They could really can't. They could really make it. Now you're saying. So this was about twenty. This is a thirty thousand dollar watch from, from uh, probably. Yeah, I think I think new. They're twenty eight, and Oof. I got it for nineteen nineteen and change or something like that. If you and, and and the nice thing was because I did the trade, I paid a, a fraction of the sales tax on it too, which ended oh. up being a couple hundred dollars. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Damn! I now do you love this watch? Because I think uh, the, the most important yeah. thing is whether you love it. Because if you love it and you weren't uh, so yeah. much uh, so much so in love with the Submariner, then it's definitely worth it. Yeah, the, there's a couple things about that. Yeah, yeah. like first of all, it, I I treat my watches like luxury items, kind of like mm -hmm. when I go to a casino, I take a certain amount of money and I assume that it's gone. Yeah. Like I, I don't buy watches assuming that I'm going to need to sell them to pay bills or do anything yeah. like that. So anyway, so it has to be, you know, about, you know, connecting and all that kind of stuff. I know it sounds pretentious, but anyway, <laughs> um, yes, I absolutely, is, the, the Vacheron is the, the unbelievably, I, I can't even describe how different it was to get this one than any other watch that I've got. Yeah. And I mean, I, I literally will be sitting around in, you know, shorts and a t-shirt and I'll put it on just to look at it while I'm watching TV and things like that. Even though I don't wear it out unless yeah. it's, you know, dressing up a little bit, but, and I, and I actually really love the, uh, the Seamaster too. I, it fits surprisingly well for a 42. What's your wrist size? Like six and a half. Six. Okay. That's my, that's the same as mine. Yeah. I yeah think 40, 42 is okay. Yeah, well, this 42 is okay. If yeah. you, uh, I don't know why they don't promote this more, mm -hmm. but so like the Submariner on the um, the Oyster bracelet, it has uh, that one end link that kind of shoots out a little bit past where the lugs are. Yes, the yes. the end link, the end yeah, link. Yes. The end link is is not pivoted. It's it it shoots out. So yeah, li shoots. literally, the lug to lug on the Seamaster. <laughs> is better yes. than the Submariner, even though it's supposedly a, a millimeter or two bigger because it's yes. hinged there. So your lug to lug is your lug to lug and that's it. Right. So it this fits me better than my Submariner did. Ah, oh, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I also huh. have flat wrists. It's so, I mean, it, it, it all depends mm -hmm. on your wrist and where your, you know, bone structure is. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, and it's, uh, I, I, 
the 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 Submariner is definitely shot up in price, like in, for 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 not really a good reason, to be honest. Um, Seamaster is also an icon. It's just the, the the difference that Seamaster is like right. They they make so many variants, so that sure. that hurts the resale value of the Seamasters. Right. Just, and again, I just don't care about the resale value of it. I yeah. wanted. I wanted a great dive watch that's got an iconic look and yeah i mean you can't really go wrong with the seamaster and yeah I, I understand the value is it isn't there but as far as the movement and all that yeah. kind of stuff it's it's an excellent it's watch. nothing to be sneeze at sneeze that no. no 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 it's a and there's also a more beautiful looking watch kind of like if you ask non-watch people they'll take seamaster i think like nine out of ten of the time because of how it, it, it the all that ceramic it just makes it really pop yeah that that ceramic fit the fate i mean yeah and they put the uh, i'm a little worried about scuffing the 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 double-sided crystal or the double-sided mm. anti-reflective coating i've heard yes. that that can happen i haven't noticed it yet but yeah it really looks like there's no crystal there at all yeah adrian adrian took some macro pictures the bar bark and jack adrian Yep, I saw that one. Yeah, I saw that one. Um, yeah, he. Um, yeah, I got this just before he started. Uh, I got mine. I must have got mine right around the same time he got his. I think. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, like Omega will look out after after you. I think. I think if it's a big big deal, they probably they'll change it. Uh, yeah. I don't think Crystal is changing Crystal. I don't think it's a uh, the end of the world. No, but, and I've, yeah, I've heard people reflection. actually. People have actually paid to get the the top mm. anti-reflective buffed off. Yes. Just so that they don't have to worry about it. So, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's... <laughs> I haven't noticed any problem yeah. whatsoever. So, I, you know, I don't know. That's funny. That's yeah. funny. Now, you also mentioned that you had a Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, how did that... I actually, I mean, it is quite a small watch. I think probably you got rid of it because of that. I got like, rid of I had it. to guess. Um, I just didn't. Yeah. I, I well. Okay. You I got rid of got it. it for the wrong reasons and got rid of it because. I, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got it for. I got it for the wrong reason. Basically, mm -hmm. um, I had a pretty good relationship by this point. So this is 2015, 16, somewhere. Ooh, okay. Okay. 2015. Um, wow. And I had a pretty good relationship with my with my AD yeah. and. Uh, he, uh, we were looking at Breitlings and things because um, I, I kind of wanted a Nava timer. I wasn't sure, but yeah. And um, he calls me the one morning and he goes, "All right, so um, I know that your price range isn't this, but I have a cancellation order on uh, a Daytona." Ooh. And at this point, I knew enough to know that, like you know, it's just not that easy to to, to grab one of these, and they hold their value really well. So if I can scrape together the cash, I, you know, this is not the worst thing in the world to get. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I drove up there and, and I bought it. It was the the white face, you know, um, pre-ceramic. So it was the last version before the ceramic. Wow. Yeah. And it was it was really, really great. Uh, and I just didn't like it. So yeah. um, I, I got to tell you, I remember I remember I was on the train and uh, it was I think it was when I got already on my waiting list for the for the black one. Yeah. I still didn't have it. And I, okay, I was going to college in the city, so I wasn't all the time. And I started noticing watches. Yeah. And I saw a lot of steel bezel, white dial, and the black dial, and two tone. And I remember it's like not liking them as well. And I still didn't have mine. I was like, mm, didn't like it. And yeah. so, so how? Why did you get rid of it? How did you get rid of it? So I got rid of it because. Uh... I don't know uh, what's the, the I, I saw the values of them changing. Yes. And uh, I knew. I, it, so if you're in my shoes, I mean, it's mm. it's the, the beginning of what we're seeing now. It's like the very, very beginning of that, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm like, wait, so I can not only get my money back, but actually make some money if I sell this, you know. And uh, um, I just had this this epiphany. epiphany. Yeah, I had never been to Europe. I had never been to Europe. So, so I'm like, I'm going to take a solo trip to Europe. And how do I make that happen? Like first class and, you know, do all this fun stuff. Well, I have, you know, 
fifteen thousand dollars that I don't wear, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I ended up selling that. I took my trip to Europe or to Switzerland. Um, you know, I toured the Zenith factory. I went to the Patek Museum. Uh, oh, you know, nice. Me too. Me too. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So Geneva. From I trained from Geneva over to Zurich. You know. Oh, and, me too. What the hell? Yeah. Did you? Wow. Yeah, I went up into the mountains on all by train. Went up into the mountains, stayed there for two days. You know, an eight day trip, completely paid for. So and then, you you took like this because there is these famous like train trips. Yeah. That you stop at like all different towns. Is that what you take? Uh, I I. It or did you travel just by yourself? I traveled by myself, and it wasn't okay. no, yeah, it wasn't with a group or anything. But yeah, oh, that's okay. basically what I did. I went from Geneva to Le Lac to. Uh, Lusan, I'm oh, pronouncing oh, probably all. I'm probably butchering. Nice. And um, and then to I, I ended up in Zurich at the very end, and then I flew out of there. So that's that's the way to do it. I just did it on the cheap because I I had I had a Delta ticket, and they have these promotions once in a yeah. while, and yeah. it was four hundred dollar ticket to there and back, and it's it's like free. Yeah, four hundred dollars? Are you kidding me? But it was in like. Middle of February, so it was yeah, like I went really December, gloomy, yeah. doomy. Oh, yeah. yours in December. Yeah, yeah, it was gloomy, doomy. But I didn't, I didn't care. I was like, my wife wasn't happy. She was grumpy, but it was freaking amazing. I loved it. it yeah, was like, it, it, yeah. It basically that Daytona gave me a once in a lifetime trip. I almost, mm -hmm. uh, I was up in the Alps um, at a town called Zermatt. Wow. And yeah, there's no cars. You can only get there by mountain yeah. train. I didn't know stuff like that, you know, Shit, existed. Man. Um and uh it was supposed to snow a couple inches. It ended up snowing, I think, two and a half feet. Dude. And avalanches, they the, all but one train track was shut down and it was it turned into a quite the adventure. So yeah. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Wow. It was neat. That's an experience. I, yeah, and so I I was able to pay for that trip completely. Plus, had enough money when I got back. I had this, you know, uh, affection for the Cartier Roadster. Mm. So I had enough Roadster. I had enough left over to um to pick up another white face chronograph, um in the Cartier Roadster. Now most people will not understand. Uh, the roadster because that is really an acquired taste. Archie actually loves, he misses his roadster. He, yeah. uh, he had not a chronograph, he had, I think, just a basic roadster. Okay. Yeah. The, um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. Yep, definitely an acquired taste. It's, yeah. um, I totally get anybody disliking it. You know, it, it's yeah. fine. But the only thing that I would say about it is, um, mm. It, I, you know, the whole thing is based on car lines and, you know, tail lights and things like that. Yes. So it's really gimmicky, but without being in your face gimmicky. But anyway, if you've never held one, it really, that case is really, you can just tell that it's Cartier doing what Cartier does. And they made a fantastic piece of, you know, metal. It's just, it's an amazing amazingly built case and uh, you know i don't know what to tell you it's, it's almost like it's more yeah no i know i held this watch and that's why actually i am i'm not I, I don't hate this one you know most people who will look at it they will hate it immediately but it's all it's very similar yeah uh to the same kind of the state that this taste that a lot of people have for the yacht master because they didn't try it on they just know it's not as hyped as submariner yeah but submariner is all these sharp edges Whereas Yachtmaster, it's sculpted. Everything is just it, it wears. Yachtmaster is a Submariner that wears like a date just. If you wear, you're wearing a date just right now. It's very comfortable. You don't feel yeah. any any sharpness, anything. This is actually very in, in the very similar uh, vein. The way it's made, just uh, you know, actually, I was so I was to Barcelona, and this watch, right. yeah, actually reminds me a lot of like. This is like if Gaudi was designing a watch. It, it, it really, yeah. It's I don't know how to explain it. It's you got to experience it, and then if you hate it still, that's fine. I get it. It's not. I'm not trying to convince anybody that they should like it. But no, no, no. Like, let me show you. You know, Casa Mila. Yeah. Is this like a fame? Right. So if you look at the, let's see. Oh the, yeah, yeah. The flowing lines, right? It's uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. 
it's not it's not for everyone but definitely hey it's a bargain it's absolute bargain because they're not really trendy right now and it's not but it you i get more compliments with that because oh, yeah. obviously the world is a not a watch person's world no no get more compliments with that than and my g-shock than yeah. anything else Dude, they look at this people go like they freak out they're like what what is this that's yeah. so cool you especially if you hand them you hand yeah. this watch to someone it's a very it's a tactile feeling you can you, you can explore this watch with your fingers all the grooves and curves it's just it it has a yeah it it, it like it's kind of weird because it has an elegance to it but it's an mm -hmm. absolute tank yeah. i mean the Eta movement that it's based on is like a workhorse. You can get it serviced yep. anywhere. You can beat the crap out of it. The steel is amazing that they use. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it you'll get the hairline scratches, but you really can't hurt. Well, I don't know what they do with yep. it, but it's it's really well built. And Cartier, they're people say it's a fashion brand, but it's pretty. It's a pretty insane uh, brand. Well, that that watch, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the first, if not the first, to do the quick release um, uh, bracelet. Oh, sh no shit. Really? So that watch first came out in uh, 2002 or something like that. I'm not really sure the dates. I think it was right around then. Uh -huh. And it has it, it come it it came originally with two straps, the bracelet yeah. and the leather strap. And it just has this little button on the bottom that you push and it slides right off. Wow. And I don't know who made it first, but I I'm I mean, this is not a new watch and it's had it for a long time. Oh, I never I never paid attention to that. Now yeah, they, do you do you have the leather strap for it? No, I don't. That was the only thing that didn't come with it when I when I bought you it. Know, and I, I've never got another one, but I, I I might still. Dude, you can probably go to Cartier and they'll they'll hook you up. Oh, they will. I already yeah. went in. I, I went in to ask them, and I saw all the colors yeah. and everything. I, I just never pulled yeah. the trigger on it. Freaking as, cool. As with anything with Cartier, I think just to get a leather strap on there is like six hundred bucks or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. No, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. No, it's Cartier. It yeah, like, but you get like really good. Quality. You're gonna have also have to wait eight months or something like that. Yeah. So probably. if you plan something for your birthday, get it a year before. Yeah. Just to be safe. And you also have yep. a day just Wimbledon dial, fluted yeah. bezel, and the Jubilee. That is oh actually JJ has the very same combination, I think. I I heard that yeah, somebody had, yeah. That's the that's the most expensive way to go about this. Now my my preferred choice is the just the smooth with the oyster, because that's the <laughs> that's the cheapest version of the Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh now I do I do really like now do you know that this the marker what the marker at the nine is i have i mean Test. i was gonna say like no I, I i never heard that it was anything i just thought it was the the loom that they used oh no what's interesting is that now a lot of people think that it's so it's a wimbledon dial right what right. is that was it's wimbledon what is wimbledon it's tennis yeah right it's tennis it's tennis cool 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 now, a lot of people think that that's just your ordinary marker from uh, from the date chest. Yeah. But it's not. It's actually supersized. And that's supposed to be uh, the the net. The net. Is it really? The tennis net. Yeah. Take a look at look at it. Look at it closely. Well, I you know, and the funny thing is, no, I I I, I agree with you that it is supersized and it's a mm. it's an unusual marker yeah. for uh, but I didn't know that um yeah the uh the dial and the actual like championship tennis match yeah. were they so they actually coordinated with this well they they are the biggest probably they're the biggest sponsors of oh, Wimbledon. Abs absolutely yeah. but i did i i kind of thought it was just like how the batman gets named and all that kind of stuff because it no had no no that's actually no it is it is it's an official kind of name wimbledon yeah oh. actually on if you go on I well yeah if you search their site yeah that's, yeah, on the website actually says it's Wimbledon. Yeah, this one was the only Rolex that I actually had to wait list. For, well, up until now, I have my Explorer on order, but this was my first wait list um, Rolex. Yeah, actually, yeah, because the Wimbledons, they're not. Uh, oh, yeah, it was. They, they basically said they get this configuration in, you know, once 
maybe every two or three months or something like that. And mm. so I, again, I had good relationship with, it, but it still took a year, a year, a little over a year to get. Wow. Wow. That's, that's quite some time as well. Yeah. And now you said you're waiting for the Explorer one. Yeah. Same one. You, the, the 36 that you have. The yeah. 36, the lady size. One second. Yeah. The lady size. Go. Oh. So now what, what's the, what's the situation? When are you getting the, the Explorer one? Did they say? Uh, so, you know, you can only, I mean, you, you take this with a grain of salt because yeah. I don't know that they know, but mm -hmm. um, uh, I put it on, I got on the waiting list. I'm sorry. There is no waiting list according to uh, the ADs, but I'm right. on the waiting list. Uh, I got yeah. on maybe two or three months ago, two months ago, right after it came out, I, I said that I wanted it. And I would even be interested if they got in the two-tone one, just let me know. I'll come in and look at it, you know, Ooh. because two-tone anything Rolex don't ever judge from the pictures online or anything like that. See it, see it in person first. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. So this is a really interesting thing that a viewer sent me. So, you know how the people are dragging the two tone, and I freaking sure. fell in love with the two tone. Yeah, not on day one, but like on day two, because day one I went in and I got on the waiting list for the for the steel one. Yeah, but on day two I was really thinking about the the two tone, and I thought like, I think that's the one to get. To be honest, I think it's the one that they're gonna discontinue the quickest, and um, it'll probably be yeah, it'll. 10 years from now, it'll probably be hard to get. Now, let me show you something. Now, what, what do you see here? The, are we looking at the watermark on the dial or? No, no, no. Uh, so this is a Rolex Explorer 1. Right. One of the earlier editions. And mm -hmm. for a short time, it's really interesting about this one, is this was made with yellow gold hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it kind of the two tone Resembles. has the yellow yeah. gold hands. Yeah. And so some people are speculating that 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 the two tone could be a hint at at this particular explorer that had those yellow gold hands. They celebrate uh, uh, they're celebrating the history of this watch and I, I you know i said that i like the, the two-tone because it is a kind of a rolex way of honoring uh the watch once it reached certain i don't know maybe certain internal metrics or something yeah uh but also seeing a yellow gold hands on the on the previous version of explorer kind of actually makes it a little bit more special i mean cool, that's, right? yeah that is cool yeah and i, I I, I love all the history stuff, but uh, yeah, it comes down to if, if he gets a two tone in and I go in and try it on and I like it, I'm, I mm -hmm. don't really care about uh, anybody else's <laughs> opinion on it at that point, I guess, but well, no, the history. Yeah. I, yeah. Two tone. <laughs> two tone Tim, man. No, I mean, I took it wrong. Way. I do hope he gets the steel, the solid steel version in first. Sure. So don't have to make the decision because I'll just get the steel version first. But I mean, if the two-tone comes in first, I'd have to really consider it. Mm, Two-tone's freaking expensive. I mean, that's the only problem with it. It is it is quite it, a yeah, bit it's like, more expensive. I think it's 10.5 10, here or something like yeah. that. So You're right. It, I, double, double. That's... Yeah, it's fair bit of coin, fair yeah. bit of coin. But I would, is, yeah. I, I would take it and then get on the waiting list for for another piece, maybe a GMT Master Two. I think that's yeah. the only thing that you're missing in your collection. The, the, I I don't have a GMT. You're right. And yeah, I, or Explorer Two. Yeah. What do you think about that? What about an Explorer Two? Uh, I I, I like said style. you can only so when when you start throwing out lots of names of Rolexes that you wouldn't mind yeah. buying if they came in. Yeah. You, the 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 ad kind of loses interest and you know he's like yes. well you know i don't want him to think i'm a flipper so i basically no no, get, no 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 yeah yeah look um, no no but you have to be realistic you have to be realistic uh yeah. your collect you can show him your your collection oh, no he knows said, trust, trust yeah. me he knows that i want the explorer yeah and then i said yeah and if any of the other explorer versions come in and i yeah. also said um i didn't say gmt's but i did say and by the way if a platinum daytona comes in mm. I I I, yeah. I I don't care. I'll just buy it because yeah. 
is it it at that point you yeah. I mean, you get that at retail and you're you halfway to everything yeah you're, yeah you're, I mean, you can, halfway you to can retire. sell it a double price yeah by two yeah, more but, no he uh, knew i was yeah, joking but yeah i yeah. I, I, I he does um he is going to let me know if any any explorers come in yeah yeah I, I you know an explorer too black dial for you would be freaking perfect i like that yeah because you got the sub the kind of you got the diver in your seamaster yep you got the dress then you got your second more luxurious dress i guess in the date chest yeah, explorer true. one it could be like your beater that's the you retire the cocky and you wear the explorer one that's what i do uh, yeah i was gonna wear it to the hike until that thing got canceled unfortunately yeah well, I'm gonna... well, you you canceled it yourself no i just i was drunk and i threw it out there tim i, I was watching think... i watched the whole thing <laughs> I, I know i saw it happen it was a disaster it was a disaster it was good watching though i mean i give you that you know what i mean it was yeah. entertaining if nothing else entertaining show by the way you know you know the the backstory i i revealed it a little bit later but the the man the duke of ted he messaged me the next day and said like uh, you know what i want my money's worth so you have to pretend like you're trying to get out of it oh god okay <laughs> So I had to be like, man, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out of this situation. So he wanted to, to he, he, you know, he paid the money. He wanted to play. Yeah, along. he wanted he to play like, it okay, up, yeah. Fine. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Look, you, you paid the money. So whatever you say, boss. Yeah. I mean, 500, like, yeah. Hey, I, I love a lot of money. Watch channels and, you know, like, but uh, I don't think I'm sending anyone any $500 uh, super chats anytime soon. <laughs> man so he had you know i gave him a lot of value from from that i think yeah. for a whole week i was That's like trying to get yeah. out of the the not hiking even yeah. you know even nico leonard got in on the on the joke so it was I like, yeah like i always wonder he hasn't been on and uh, a scene hasn't been on for a while i haven't seen him his channel's been almost non-existent lately nico no uh uh oshin oshin oh oshin oh he he's in some situation there i think he he posted an instagram yeah uh that something was going on he was upset about something uh i'm not sure well somebody no, no. shut down or something like yeah that. somebody yeah. shut but no ocean was on uh just a couple of days ago with uh with he was doing the whole rebel stream with nico nine hour rebel stream yeah but they but didn't then he, nico deletes it yeah, they deleted that, so I didn't see it live. So yeah, so yeah. I, I, I was yeah, I heard about it, and I didn't. It was a big deal. Oh. Actually, I missed it as well. That was that sucked so much. I had I had to do some errands. Man, I yeah, I got fired. I got sacked from a job, and then I was doing a project for someone. Uh, and then they re because I was sacked, they asked me to refund the money, and I, I I went to return the money and I checked the envelope. Actually, I took out a thousand dollars from there for some because uh, a wife asked me for for money. So it's like, ah oh, man, I got the super chat, and now I have to re refund. And it's like, oh my god, I just keep losing money, just hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging Whoa. money. So it was a uh, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. But, but uh, you got it all worked geez. out now. Yeah, it, you know, it's uh, all you know what? I'm like it's all good. I yeah. don't know anyone anything. That's great. I'm at, yeah, I'm at a point where it's like, man, YouTube is bringing in uh enough for to sustain. I uh, I'm filing for for some paper for some legal paperwork and I'm all good. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. it's all it's all sailing from here on. So, I'm going to be able to do these kind of off air yeah streams more often because i'm gonna be full-time full-time that's great yeah uh, hey i i'm all for it because uh you know regular tv sucks and i don't have any anybody i can talk watches which like <laughs> like, I, like i talk like here but uh yeah hey but, man this was uh this was really good oh uh we have we actually we have to talk about your the watch that you built oh yeah okay we can do that quick yeah what's this what's this all about what the well what, what? so I, I kind of don't, I try not to half-ass anything. So when I started yeah. to get into watches and it like started to really escalate to the point, you know how you start, it's like, well, 
I don't need, I'll never have a watch that's over a thousand dollars and then I'll never have a watch that's over five thousand dollars and I'll never have this and I'll never have, you know, and it just I'll never have platinum Daytona until, well, yeah. So I'm telling, I'm putting that <laughs> in my mind now. So, like, you know, 10 years from now when I get it, you know, but, um, so I figured if you're going to be into it like this and you're going to appreciate the style of it, the, uh, you know, um, history of it, all the other things to it. Yeah. But the mechanics of it really mm. didn't make an, you know, a whole lot of sense. Um, okay. So I basically decided, you know, uh, I looked at what tag. It, actually, this is before I sold my tag, but only, almost kind of what turned me off to brands like that, where they were just buying, you know, ETA movements or yeah. slipper movements or whatever, putting it in, mm. barely changing anything. Mm. I don't mind brands using ETA movements, but like if, yeah. if you literally just put it in, you know, the simplest of casings and, and then remarket it. So I was like, yeah. how hard is that to actually do? So uh -huh. I bought, uh, which is this one, the ETA 2801 manual wind. Um, mm -hmm. I ordered it and then you have to order, um, there's plastic, uh, things that fit it. Plastic in the case. insert. Yeah. The plastic <laughs> inserts, you have to order the right case size. You order the face, um, you pick what hand you want. So I went with like the, the um brigade uh yeah yeah the uh, a yep. little bit they're, they're not real steel you know they're not heat it's just painted painted they're just, right? they're just painted yeah um you know so i just modeled it after kind of a bunch of different uh, watches that i knew and i liked and uh the the movement is actually finished kind of nice it's like a, a fake geneva yeah you know, it of, looks like some geneva stripes yeah like it, yeah and um literally uh, i think the whole thing cost me Three hundred dollars to do. Wow, and it's kind of Hamilton, actually. It looks like you're Hamilton. Yeah, I I, mo I modeled it off of things I knew. I at that point yeah. I had the date just so like the case size and everything like that. I kind of knew from there. Um, I had the Hamilton, so yeah, it has the khaki, you know, the the that look to Dial. it. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, I started to learn about ETA movement, so I knew about that. So I figured the hardest part was getting the hands on without breaking mm. them. I broke about four sets of hands, I think, putting that Whoa. together. It's okay. They're like five. They're like five dollars a set. So it's oh. not. <laughs> got all the tools and everything. Um, yeah, I do. I, I I got all that. That was more expensive than putting the watch together. I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, because there's so there's the crystal press. Yep. There is all the little screwdrivers because there's like a million different sizes of screws. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, the um, I didn't have to do too much to the movement. Uh, mm -hmm. The movement was pretty much pre-assembled. I mean, you had to put the stem in and couple of the other parts um and then but uh the stem was a bitch and uh the hands were mm. just awful to put on there i mean I, to, to press them on there with that stupid little press that they give you uh, i mean oof it's definitely a skill because you're not supposed uh, it's so easy to scratch the dial while you're putting the hands on oh my uh, yeah i went through two so yeah i went through i think two or three dials i ordered a black one and a white one and i know yeah. i destroyed the black one really quick. wow yeah so that was good but it you yeah. know I, it helped me learn just like you know I, I played with the movement a little bit before i put it together i'm not claiming that i can did you wear those plastic gloves no um i did not wear the little plastic. i didn't wear the little yeah, i can only gloves. imagine how much more difficult that is oh god i like I said, I toured the, the Zenith factory and I watched them putting all that stuff together. And yeah, I'm like, uh, I just wanted to understand the mechanics of it. That's why I built this one. Um, I, I certainly make no claim to know how to put a watch to actually, you know, take it apart, put it together. But, um, you know, it at least gave me the, the, the knowledge and, you know, the vocabulary to talk about it with people. So, oh, man. No, that makes that. <laughs> oh man that makes sense uh, but look it, it is it is uh it is a fun project to do yeah uh you know if you're going to be collecting watches that is something you know there is uh like this kickstarter brand they do like make your own watch it's a yeah. box it has everything all the tools the dial etc and then you just do it so i always i always kind of thought about doing it but never pulled the trigger uh, yeah i mean uh I yeah. would recommend it, um, you know, yeah. just because it just, it, you know, you, you kind of wonder why they're so expensive and, yeah, you know, you could make a good things. video out of it, to, to be honest. Yeah, I probably. You know what? Probably at this point, uh, I should contact them and ask them to give one to me for free. 
Yeah, just get I'll make oh, a I'm video sure, about I'm it. Yeah. I'm sure they would give you one for free. And yeah, it, it would just be it's a it, you know, it's fun and it, it, it I mean it's your hobby, you know, like so yeah. if you really if you love watches enough to spend, you know, insane amounts of money on them, mm-hmm. you know, playing with them and I don't know, working on them yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah. It's probably going to be much easier to, to put the crown in because the, the crown, right? That's the, or was it already sized the length of the? Of no, the no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the crown and all that stuff had to be you know, the right thing to fit in there to fit with the movement and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, yeah. Damn, that's probably a. Oh no, that was yeah. Is that screw down or not? Not a screw down. Crown. No, it's not a screw down. No, it's just a, a you know regular manual wind. Yeah. Yeah, because I can only imagine the screw down crown. Man, that could be a a nope. problem of astronomic proportions at that. Yeah, point. I didn't need to make it any harder on myself. But hey, yeah, I yeah. built this. Um, I'm gonna say probably ten years ago, and it still works. So, mm. oh, that's that's, not, ooh, that's quite a lot of time. That's not too bad. And you know what? Just like in the email, we forgot to talk about. Oh yeah, uh, the Aorus. The, the Aorus. The Aorus. Yeah. What, what's the situation with the Aorus? I still have it. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, open works situation. Always yeah. Like- I started to learn about skeletonized dials and things like yeah. that. And uh, at the time, so this is over 10 years ago, hmm. you know, a, an actual skeletonized dial wasn't in the budget. So um, this one, hmm. I think, was on, uh, I got a discount on this one and it fit me okay. Um, and uh, I, I didn't have an Oris. So I thought it'd be cool to have one. Hmm. It's like a, this is like an aqueous skeleton? Kind of. Uh, the, kind of. The, the movement is, um, I don't know. It, the actual watch's name is Oris Williams F1 Team Skeletonized. Or Yeah, that's probably, they discontinued that line. Oh, yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then it's, just, I, I think, Salita movement in there or something yeah. like that, but... It's not really a watch that needed to be skeletonized, or they don't. Yeah. To, to even call it, it skeleton- is kind of cool for for non watch people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But to to even know, like, yeah, I ha- they call it skeletonized, so that's why I do. But yeah. it's not, you know what I mean? It's, not really. Yeah, it, yeah. It's they just, just took the they took the face off, yeah. and and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they took the face off, and it's like they saved the money on it. Probably ch- charged more for. I know, yeah, exactly. So, but I got a pretty good deal on it. It's, yeah. I think I paid nine hundred bucks for that. 10 mm. some years ago and i don't know it's probably worth i don't know 500 maybe yeah know? i mean these things they still it's still built with waterproof it's built like a tank the bracelet's yeah. integrated so yeah yeah no 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 issues with it ever no issues there yeah had it serviced once i think over the last 10 years i was it probably going to be very cheap to service as well oh yeah it was i don't even think it was maybe maybe 100 bucks 150 bucks or something like that nice yeah for that for <laughs> For wow. those, that's the beauty of the cheap movements is, you know. Damn. And, uh, All right. Well, very cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. There we go. Uh, we got an hour, an hour of a, wow. of a conversation. Went through quite yep. uh you, know, you didn't ask me about my G-Shock, but that's oh, okay. You know what? Actually, by the way, actually, I have a, a, a well, he's like a patron, a patron okay. who asked me. If I can uh, modify that same G-Shock, actually, uh, let me bring it up here because I swear he just e- e- emailed me yesterday. And what he wants, he wants this. Oh, what a coincidence. I mean, is I think he's from the future. <laughs> he wants this dial to be flipped from a negative to a positive. Oh, yeah, you can. Um, you can do that. I've heard. And do you know someone who can do that? I do not, but I, yeah. I know you guys, uh, and and trust me, I, yeah. I get it. But uh, I think TGV did a video on it, on that exact thing. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. I don't know who does it. I like the negative dial. Yeah. Um, I I know people say, oh, it's hard to react. I, I mean, I I don't have any issue with it at all. I like mm. it. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, there there's definitely people out there who will do that for you. Yeah. So I'm looking. I'm looking for someone. Uh, who who will do this for me? <laughs> what a pretty pretty funny coincidence! It's yeah, literally yeah. the same one. When when you saw it, I was like, "What the? Is yeah. this a coincidence?" 
That's pretty. Well, cool. what, uh, so yeah, what, what, why, why the green one? What's uh, what's the story of the of the G Shack? Um, I really, I, I never owned one. Maybe when I was a kid, I did, and yeah. uh, I always wanted one. And um, got the black one right here. Not, I know you. Can, I, I've seen that one a it's couple the times. God tier, mate. The God tier, the the, <laughs> yeah. purple, the same one he gives away. Yeah. Oh, I have the. This is uh, this is the one that he gave me. The, the oh, nice. Yeah. Did you get him to sign it? <laughs> uh, he he sent a card that was oh, signed okay. with it, That's but better. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he doesn't. Probably he doesn't sign them because people would just put them on eBay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but, but um, yeah. So this one, I just wanted something to you know go hiking up to the cabin and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And I was like, hey, why not make it green? You know, I don't know. A military, so, military car. Yeah. Well, you know, like, yeah. I, I highly recommend that you go hiking with the Explorer One <laughs> when you get it. When I get it soon, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, do it with the Explorer One. It's all about the base weight. It's the that's why this is the perfect uh, Rolex to hike with. You need to get it nicely scratched up and beat up. Oh, Explorer. I, I plan to wear that one a lot when it yeah. comes. So yeah. So that's nice to hear. And then uh, give this one to someone. In need of what? Get someone into the hobby. You know, it's like uh, you start, you get the Rolex, and yeah. then you have to give back. It's like well, no, I, Rolex I, gives you a watch. It's a, it's cool things to true. do. Um, I did. Uh, my my brother is into it a little bit now. Mm -hmm. I bought him uh, actually um, a Hamilton khaki. Uh, wow, nice. Yeah, for um, I think his fortieth birthday. I think I got that for him. But anyway, yeah. So uh, so he's kind of in it now. He he wants a Rolex, um, uh, but uh, he's really because he's not a watch guy, yeah. so he doesn't quite understand the wait list. Oh, you know what? Maybe you can you can you can probably you can get him date just. They'll probably put you on the waiting list. For they will. Just. He he yeah. just he's just so irritated with the whole concept of it that he's like, yeah. I'm not doing it right now. I'm like, okay, well then that's fine. Well, man, this uh, he should do it now. It's like especially. You you should tell him like a steel bezel oyster bracelet. That's a perfect one and done kind of beater. Trust me, he, like he, dial. He borrows mine. That uh, uh, you know, he he actually likes the roadster. He borrows that sometimes. So, you know, he he gets it, but he's just mm. uh, he's just uh, he doesn't believe in the whole waiting list thing. I guess, but Man, I'll, everything I'll, is going to be waiting list soon. He's he's going to regret it. I mean, oh, it's I, kind of, he's also he's on a waiting list for a tesla so uh you know that's <laughs> oh he's on the waiting list for, but the tesla is okay uh, the tesla is gonna disposable it's gonna tank but the role is he can wear forever ah forever. Yeah. you know I... you can lead you can lead the horse to the water and we can't make it drink it yep. i was trying to help out my friend and they were gonna sell him milgau z blue and he says, it's too much money, too much money. Well, now it's 15000 I know, right? Yeah. Oh, I was over at the, uh, when I was, what watch was I? I don't even remember. Mm. Oh, no, I think I was picking up this one. Mm. And um, they had uh, Explorer 1 there in the case for $6,500, I think, or something like that. And I called my brother, who lives not too far from where I where I go in Philadelphia to, mm. to go by. And... I was like, if you're really interested, you should come over and buy this right now because I think that this one's going to be worth a lot more soon. And well, obviously it is. So yeah, that was. Anyway, damn. Like you said, you can't you can't make people do it, right? It's just <laughs> how many how many times I recommended uh, people to grab grab grab. Actually, they they make fun of me when I got my my first sub. They're like, oh, you're an idiot. Why would you spend eight thousand dollars for a watch? Yeah, you should, just, you should have bought a car for eight thousand. Well, who's laughing now? I know. Well, hey, my my yeah, my sub I paid eighty five hundred for, and uh, I got twelve five for it. I think so. It's like it's not even you wear it for free. Yeah, and then if you if you have to sell it, then it, it's like somebody's giving you more cash on top of it. It makes no sense, but it, it's this luxury is the new yeah. world. Yeah, yeah it's it's like new... if you. If you're rich enough or you're you're in good standing enough, we'll sell yeah. you this, which is actually worth more than it's like we'll just it's give you more money. Easiest thing ever. If you're rich, they give you money for free. They give you, they give if you're you poor, they want they want you to pay. It's like 
Yeah. Tro- uh, yeah. Tomorrow I get it. Is disaster. It's disaster. But hey, man, we're we're gonna try to get more people uh, into the community to save money, not to not to lose money. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely, absolutely crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But so so what 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 are the plans? What are the plans for the future? Plans for the future, like watch wise or yeah, watch wise. <laughs> um, watch wise. Well, as so I I have to stay a little disciplined. Yeah. Um. So I'm only allowed so many watches, you know, per time period. So once I get the Explorer, I'll start start hunting around. Um. I really I have a certificate that says I was at the Zenith factory, so I think I want a Zenith. <laughs> Just for nostalgia or something. You know, they have that one Zenith factory only. You know what I'm talking about? There is a Zenith that you yeah. that you used to only be able to buy if you were at the Zenith factory. They, I thought that they might present something like that, but when they did their sales pitch at the very end of the thing, where they showed mm-hmm. you all the new watches, I didn't. I don't recall them saying there was anything that was call them factory. Call, them. call Zenith. Call the headquarters. I'm, Tell them I visited Zenith. I think they sell it online now. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a special dial. It's so good. It's like perfectly symmetrical, perfectly clean. Huh. It's the yeah. best Zenith they make. I didn't know anything about it. That's wow. I will do that. I'm gonna. I will we check can, it out. Zenith oh, with, revival. So I see. So is it three shades of blue instead of the? It it might be this one. Hopefully. Okay. Let's see. Uh, tour. I don't know. It's uh, it's they all look the same, but uh, I mean, they all it is like one of these clean looking ones. This one is also freaking gorgeous. I think it might be this one. Wait, they're so similar. They're both freaking even like this one and the other one. They're both freaking beautiful. It doesn't even matter which one. I think oh, yeah, I something that. like this would be freaking amazing. No, I, I yeah, I'm in on the El Primero dials. Jeez, look how gorgeous. Oh, yeah, this is like they said that they found these dials or something. They got some bullshit story. You know how it is. Oh, yeah, but, well, it, it's a it's a pretty interesting factory because, like, look, up in the attic or whatever, they take yes. it up there and they have all the original little stamps and things that they use. And it's the only, it's the only watch company mm. that's still operating out of the original factory, I think, or something like mm. that. They tell you that all that stuff. Yeah, I think it's something like they hid the, the thing, the instruments, otherwise yeah, it would be it's yeah, it's it's a pretty it's neat. It's a play. cool story, yeah. It's a really cool story. I think it might be revival manufactured. The Zenith original plan has been to make the watch an exclusive edition that would be available only to visitors to the Lelou switzerland manufacturer but given the current global situation with many areas of the world still locked down it's been made available exclusively through zenith's new e-commerce platform until uh, the manufacturer reopens yeah there you go so i think that that's it this is this is the one so i'll just edit the other part out look <laughs> myself look make myself look really smart no that's uh, it, it that's that's exactly what i want as far as my zenith goes so, right yeah. look at it it's yeah beautiful yeah this was just uh well you know what we kind of skipped over the the date just the wimbledon but oh like, yeah yeah what was the what's the so when did you get it how, how did you get it um i was just my friend actually my friend was getting married and i wanted to get a new watch to wear to his wedding mm. and i went in there and this was right at the start when the rolex craziness was starting where you st- like some mariners were already on wait lists and all this kind yeah. of stuff but uh, the dates just were kind of available unless you decide you're going to pick the most Funky yeah the most yeah the collectible great, one <laughs> yeah the most collectible one that yeah. one takes a while to get so um, I thought I could get it in like three months and it ended up being about a year and that's pretty much it and part of the reason was uh, I wanted a, a a jubilee bracelet since I didn't have my other date just anymore and um, I really it's my favorite bracelet of all time so it's, mm. yeah. yeah that's the that's the most luxurious oh it's it, rolex that it's just comfort wise it doesn't yeah. i mean it's it's amazing you know it's just crazy yeah. do you have by the way by the way do you have any social media social media like i have instagram? an instagram that um i kind of use sometimes um 
Do you want for, me to plug it? Do you want me to plug it like below so people can go and subscribe? No, it's that's no, yeah? no, it's, okay, that's cool. That's cool. No, I mean, yeah, right. I, I'm just kind of doing this because I like the for the love of the hobby, for the love of the hobby. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to become a, a, a social media person. You don't want to get, you don't want, you don't want to get, uh, what's it called? Monetized, monetized on YouTube. I, n no, I gotta, t I gotta be honest, it's so much headaches. I, ah, I have heard. I mean, it's just yeah, because like there's a billion rules that you're supposed to follow, I guess, or so much drama. But you know, uh, part of the part of the co the collecting journey is the the, the drama, and uh, wristwatch collectors are the most dramatic people. Seemingly, I didn't think that would be the case, but it certainly seems like there's some some dramatic people out there. Yeah, we we collect them. Um, basically uh useless luxury items and yet somehow <laughs> we take it very seriously they tell they tell the stories oh they... i love it i love every minute of it but it's i still don't i try not to take it too seriously yeah man okay i, I have to go no, you don't uh, yeah. no i'm I just want to show. show show me <laughs> just uh well i am wrapping up so just uh we're ending anyways all right. Uh, well, David, this yes. was a great, uh, great uh, kind of off-air live stream. I I'm gonna, love yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit it. You know, uh, cut it, do do all kinds of funky things with it, and then I'm just gonna air it when I want to take a day off. So it's not Whatever. gonna air soon, but I'm gonna have it in like my back back pocket because yeah. there. Remind me. The what? Usually, Usually, what do I forget? Usually, you forget. What do I forget? I don't know what I, I forget. Know, whatever it is. Okay. He didn't ask anything, not yeah. <laughs>